can't beat Southern California. Just beautiful weather. The Did you ever go to California when it was like actually a really cool state? <laughs> like the 80s and 90s? Yeah, I mean, I don't even know if you know this about me, but I, my mom and I would spend two weeks in California every summer. And so like I learned to like kind of play golf. I learned to play tennis. I, I had my first girlfriend experience Sounds in California. Like a very, uh, white experience. I learned how to play golf and I learned how to play tennis and I got a girlfriend and <laughs> we played Mahjong. We played Mahjong. We played Mahjong on the had beach. A, an espresso martinis. And <laughs> that does sound bad. We finished off the night with some checkers. Yeah. We stayed at the La Jolla Beach and Tennis Club. <laughs> the pain of doing something gives you so much satisfaction when it's when it actually works out. Yeah. Like, it was not a given that when I started my publication that, that it was going to be successful. And in fact, it wasn't successful for five years and we just starved and, you know, tortilla and beans. That's what San Antonio is cheap. It was great to live here. And, uh, you know, you just push through it. Yeah. It was a terrible, I mean, my own father told me this is, it was a terrible idea <laughs> and that it wasn't going to work. Mm -hmm. And I think that just made me work harder. Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, it ended up working out like Andy Frisella started his company and now he's you know a billionaire but he lived in a he lived on like a bed bug infested mattress in the back of like his old store for 10 years before he got that company going and he says like that's one of the main reasons that it worked is because it couldn't get worse for him after that point you know yeah yeah i mean i i remember when was, we were starting out and you know, we lived in this tiny house and i remember your mom coming to me is like we can't we're, we're not going to make the house payment. And I was just like, well, just don't pay it. <laughs> and she was like, well, we have to pay. I was like, no, just don't pay it. We didn't pay it for like six months. What happened? They were about to kick us out. And, and you know, honestly, that, that, that made me hustle so hard. I was just, I, I, I sent out mailers like a, to subscribe. Mm -hmm. this, I mean, this before the internet was there, but you people still responded to mailers, and yeah. faxes and emails and shit. And the thing is, is that what happened was there was an anthrax scare. And so nobody was opening their mail. And so I wasn't getting any income and it forced me to kind of, oh. uh, and, and you, know, you could send emails, but at that time people weren't opening their emails really either. It was a strange time. It was that kind of people were going between paper mail and email. Yeah. And, and then uh, I figured it out. I, I actually, I kind of hit the bricks and went around and just gave speeches to these little beer wholesaler meetings around the country mm -hmm. and just ran up my credit cards because I didn't have any money to get the flights and stuff. Yeah. And that worked. That worked greater than anything else. Any ma I was kind of stuck in the mailer. Like I'd send a mailer out, we get enough money for rent. Send mm -hmm. the mailer out, get enough money for rent, just month after month. Yeah. And then when the anthrax scare hit, Nobody, the money wasn't coming in. That's why we couldn't pay the mortgage. So what happened? So I, I this guy in Washington state uh, called me, which is the furthest state from San Antonio that you could possibly go. He goes, hey, will you come speak to our group? You know, we, it's a small little group. Do you mind? And I was like, I'll be there. And I put it on the credit card, flew to Washington. It, it wasn't even in Seattle. It was in like Yakima. So like, you had to fly to Seattle, rent a car, drive three hours across the mountains. Yeah. You know, it was a real pain. Yeah. I gave the little speech. I got like 10 subscribers. I was like, oh, okay. And uh, 10 and, back then was a lot. So then, you. yeah. So I, I, and, and I did a pretty good job. So I called the guy and I go, do you mind giving me a testimonial? Like a written testimonial saying that Harry did a really good job speaking. And I sent it to all the other states. And when they, they they all have beer wholesaler groups. Mm -hmm. So I got invited to speak and I just went on a tour, like basically all summer long. And every time I'd go there, I'd get enough subscribers to pay for my travel. That is so cool. And yeah. And then it it kind of just took off from there because then they started telling each other, hey, this publication is good. The other thing I did was I made the publication itself funny. I was writing when I started it. What made you original? I was, it was, I was writing using the AP style, Associated Press, you know, the Chicago manual of style. 
this. Yeah. I was using this as all journalists do, and it <laughs> it didn't work. Nobody liked it. It didn't work. And so I said, you know what? I'm gonna create my own style. I I switched uh, I switched sentence structures around. Um, uh, I made up words, um, so it's kind of my own language. Um, and then it it just took off. It kind of snowballed after that. And then it kind of plateaued for a while. And then something happened where <clears throat> South African breweries bought Miller Brewing Company and the South African that they sent over to run it um, really liked me. I don't know why. His name is Norman Anatomy. And he goes, why aren't we talking to this guy more? We should give him scoops. And he started giving me scoops and, the, and he sub subscribed for a bunch of people. You in contact their, with this guy? Yeah, he's back in South Africa. He's in poor health, but um, but yeah. yeah. But he was Norman, a big. He, he turned Miller Light around. He he did that oh, whole. Wow. Yeah, it was it was a great time for me. So and, would you say one of the biggest drivers of starting your company when you thought you were about to fail was being desperate? Yeah. <laughs> well, the desperate forced me to get out of my comfort zone. I wasn't a natural speaker in front of people. I oh, now you're an amazing public well, speaker. Well, I had to. You got to learn to do it, and it's there's nothing more painful and f just fearful than just and also I didn't know that much like I can't believe I was acting like I was an expert you know you kind of <laughs> the fake it till you make it kind of is a thing no, it works and yeah and that it was very um uh it was it it ramped up real fast and then it plateaued and it was enough to live on but it wasn't a rich living yeah and then when Norman came over and again, relationships, uh, his distributors told him about me. And then I flew to Milwaukee and met him. We hit it off, mm -hmm. you know, a bar, you know, my business was built in bars and then it just, and then now, you know, it's the, kind of the standard. I mean, I have competitors, I have good competitors, mm -hmm. but beer business daily is pretty much a, a, one of the main standards of how beer industry executives get their news. So the you're, US. Your company, Beer Business Daily, it made it because you think that your writing was original and the fact that you started coming out with the publication daily when all your competitors were coming out with one weekly. Right. Those two reasons you think are the sole reasons that your company yeah. made it? Yeah, because email was just coming around and so you could deliver it daily. Mm -hmm. You don't have to mail it. Um, and it was... The other thing that really changed the trajectory, and I don't even know if I've talked about this before with anybody, but I read a biography of a guy, one of the guys that started Time Magazine back in the 20s. You know what Time Magazine is? Yeah, of course. Um, his name was Britton Haddon. And everybody talks about Henry Luce, who's the founder of Time Magazine. Actually, Britton Haddon was a 50% partner with Henry Luce. Mm -hmm. But Brit he, Britton... Uh, he died when he was like 30 or 29. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't even know how, what he died of, but it's, it's weird. So the other one took but, it 100%? Yeah. But Britain is the one. What he did was he created a, a special language. This is an example. Like even if he wasn't there to cover an event, he would find out what the weather was there and he would describe the weather. And and I started doing that, you know, and and just des and describing people how they looked, how they talked, it would, you know, instead of just saying what they said, it, it, I made it a st again a story. Mm -hmm. Everything's a story. Yeah, beginning, middle, end. It it made it compelling, and it made it so people. I mean, the the one comment I get to this day, everywhere I go, just in Chicago, I got it, was. Uh, it's the first thing I open in the morning to read, and I never miss reading it. And that's the biggest compliment. Like, no matter how busy, you know, our oh, tagline yeah. is Beer Business Daily, read on toilets all over America. <laughs> because that's, that's awesome. People tell me they, you know, you do your morning ablutions, and uh, yeah, you read them. Man, that is so badass. Sometimes I forget that you literally started something from scratch, and it's made you who you are today. Yeah. That's badass, man. Thanks. It's cool. It's uh, really fucking cool. I mean, you, um, the balls that a man needs to have to just start something that he loves and yeah. for it to stick with it through all those years of being broke with yeah. mom. Yeah. I mean, when you guys had me when I was born in Denver, y'all were broke. Yeah. Like no money. 
Now, do you think that when someone starts a company like Uber or the scooters that you guys see around the streets, uh, Bird or Lime, now, do you think that the secondary companies behind those, like Lyft, like Lyft is behind Uber and Lime is behind Bird, or maybe it's mm -hmm. the other way around, do you think yeah. those companies copied them right when it started getting big, or do you think they were already in production because Here's by that time it's too late? Well, for for those particular examples, there were tons of Uber c copycats, and Uber wasn't the first. Um, so but what, Uber what, Uber got the investment. They, uh, you know, it's, it's all about money. Yeah, if you get the. It, for a scalable business like that, like Beer Biz Daily is a niche publication, mm -hmm. but if you want to scale big, whoever gets the investment first, usually not always, is the one that wins. And mm -hmm. you know, and Uber came out on top. Uh, they broke all the rules. You know, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't. Remember in Austin, Uber wasn't legal. Yeah, and there was some janky other like Facebook oh, group yeah. that used to, you know, call. I had to do an assignment over Uber. How controversial they were. Yeah, right, and. And Lyft is, is, believe it or not, is growing like crazy right now. Do you know why? Mm -mm. Because they, uh, they hire women drivers. And, wow. And women don't like to ride with men, especially at night. Yeah. And so women, that's why they have a pink logo. And so, like, if you're out with a group of girls, that's or if they're, out, if they're out without guys, yeah. they'll call it Lyft. That's genius. Yeah. See, that one little originality right. just... just Make it a little more convenient in an original way that other companies haven't. Exactly. You'll yeah. And I and they don't hire women drivers. They, they attract, you know, the contractors, obviously. Yeah. But uh, you can get on Lyft. And they, they do have male drivers, but you can get on Lyft and choose which gender your driver is. Really? And so that, in turn, gets more pe women to want to drive for Lyft because mm -hmm. they women get chosen more. So, you know, so it's a self fulfilling And that's loop. interesting. Yeah. If you really study how certain companies grow and you really get down to the micro details about it, yeah. I feel like that's such a useful mechanic or tool that you can use to kind of kickstart your own company or whatever yeah. you're trying to do. Well, you know, like, it's like Dog Party or this YouTube channel. I'm really trying to be original, yeah. not have intros and outros. And I'm really trying to figure out how can we be different from other channels? Right. And that's what I want to focus on. Yes. Originality, and trial, authenticity, and creativity. And trial and error. Yes. You know, like, like, like I said, I was doing, I was writing AP stories. Like I was trying to pretend like I was the New York Times and nobody wanted that in the beer yeah, industry. Exactly. And so I, I read a book that literally was written like in the thirties. I found it on, on my grandfather's shelf. Like I don't, it's not in print anymore. Yeah. I don't think. Uh, because nobody's remembered Britain Hatton. They, it's all about Henry Luce. I don't, you know, he's not even on the masthead, I don't think. So, mm -hmm. of, of time. But, like, that idea that he had, it translated into the 20th century, like, for me. It it was not a, it, you know. You want to give some of the ideas? Yeah, so. it doesn't have to be a new idea, in other words. It's just, it has to be a good idea. Yeah. 